We want to look at some of the signs that make people dislike you through the example of Amber Heard. The thing is, people are all prone to hide their own flaws and bring out their best self. That's why we want to learn to spot these signs so that we can protect ourselves. And just to be clear here, this is not a video to attack Amber Heard. We just want to look at the mistakes to not do. The first mistake is very frequent disconnecting glances. Focus on Amber Heard's head movement during the interview and deposition. Omar Khayyam, he, um, it's in farce. Has Johnny, have you ever hit Johnny Depp? <laughs> so, as, where else would they be? Water, yeah. Uh... She does this thing where her head kind of moves from side to side and just looking at something just almost aimlessly. And the thing with these glances is that they signal disinterest. While it is natural to look away from time to time during a conversation, the prolonged periods of time where you are looking away could signal disinterest, arrogance, or even disrespect to the speaker. All of which will make the person dislike you despite if you have done this intentionally or not. So if you found yourself doing this, make a point to have a more steady eye contact to the person, especially when you're listening to them. And I've made a more comprehensive video on this, so you can check that out if you want to. By removing this mistake, people won't misunderstand you. But that's only one of the mistakes. The second sign is the tilting chin. And Amber Heard almost does this instinctively when she talks. Nothing. But Emma, can I, are you happy? Is a, a constant threat to my safety, my my family's safety. Um, Seriously? Yes, of course. And you know, um, just when you see the chin tilting up when you're talking to the person, it signals some sort of hierarchy. It gives off the feeling that you're looking down on others from a higher ground, and you can even see this in a more animalistic behavior. When you see the contrast between the leader and the servants. You can see that the servants are bowing down in submission while the leader is looking over them. The small action gives off a dismissive and arrogant demeanor and will subconsciously trigger feelings of resentment and mistrust in other people. And in most conversations, you want to level yourself so you don't give off the wrong vibe because most people don't want to be looked down upon. Also, if you feel like you're getting something out of this, hit that like button. Both of these traits actually signal a much more dangerous sign, and that is the need for absolute control. The reason Amber Heard is dismissive, patronizing, and condescending is because she needs to be in control of the situation, and she is doing this by pushing other people into inferior positions. She is trying to subtly elevate her own position while morphing every single friendship into a power play. The exact reason, we don't really know, but this actually happens a lot with people who feel really insecure about themselves and feels like there's a need to grasp onto external control to compensate for that insecurity. This form of control forces people into one of two choices, to submit or to leave. So you can kind of see why this demeanor is so repulsive. So if you found yourself or the people around you holding to some of the themes or people a little just too tightly, learn to kind of let these control go. Remember that the only thing that you can control is yourself. Trying to forcefully control other people only gives you more anxiety and the illusion of control. And it also repels people. The last thing is having a fragmented identity. You can see here that Amber Heard is trying to put on a mask to suppress her real intentions. Honestly, we can't tell if she is deliberately trying to deceive other people or that is her real perspective. But either way, people see that as inconsistent. But where is the, um, the, the tears? The tears are not flowing. I have never seen this type of demeanor and theatrics. I spoke to law enforcement earlier today. Uh, it, it's laughable, sadly, what she's doing on the court. The fabricated crime, the fake smiles, you can see that there are literally psychologists and body language experts that are breaking down her every action to show how she is really inconsistent with a real trauma victim. Again, all these are all just speculations, but we can definitely see signs of suppression, frustration, and feeling like things are rehearsed from her. Having a fragmented identity basically comes down to the fact that people can't trust you to be who you say you are. Because if there's no trust, then there can be no relationships. I hope you guys got something out of this and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking to becoming more witty in conversations, 
I have made another video on that, so go check that out. And I'll talk to you guys next time.